Okay, welcome back to my channel, May Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite quotes. Obviously, those of us in the book community focus mostly on books, and some of the quotes I'm going to be talking about today are from books, and I really enjoyed sitting down and going through my tabs and pulling out those quotes uh, in the process of making this video. But this video is not only to talk about words on the page, I also want to talk about some quotes from poems or uh, from music that I've listened to that have really stuck with me, that have inspired me and touched my soul. So this might end up being a multiple parts video where this is going to be part one because as I sat down to really think about all of the things that have inspired me, all the words that have affected my life, so many things came to my mind uh, and I didn't want to try to cram it all in one video. So this may be a part one and there might be a part two or three coming later, but the ones in this first video are the ones that immediately jumped to my mind as something that I keep with me every day. The first one is actually from a book, a very popular book and a very well-known quote, but it still has, you know, affected my life nonetheless. And that is a quote from Gandalf from The Fellowship of the Ring. When this quote happens, Gandalf and Frodo are talking in the minds of Moria, and Frodo is lamenting the fact that he is the one that has to carry this ring. I wish it had not happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for us to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Such stunning, beautiful, poignant writing by Tolkien in this particular passage, because all of us have burdens that we wish we didn't have to carry, that we wish weren't ours, and yet they are. And sometimes they can only be ours, and they can't be shared with others. And all you can do is decide how you're going to handle that burden. And I have called this quote to my brain so many times in my life when I'm faced with a situation, a decision, a circumstance that I don't want, that I don't want to face or know what to do with. And this has offered me comfort and strength simultaneously whenever I reach for it. The next quote is kind of an entire poem, uh, and that is by Anis Monjani, who is a poet laureate, and he has a spoken word poem called Shake the Dust. And I don't remember how I first heard this, but I heard him perform it, um, I think I saw a YouTube video at one point, and it just struck my soul. It is so beautifully written. Now, obviously, the person who can do a spoken word poem best is the person who has created it. <laughs> so I will be linking the video of him performing it down below, but I will quote a small section of this uh, for you guys here because I want you guys to know how beautiful it is. This is for the hard men who want love, but know that it won't come. To the ones the amendments do not stand up for, for the ones who are forgotten, for the ones who are told to speak only when you are spoken to, and then they're never spoken to. Speak every time you stand so you do not forget yourself. Do not let one moment go by that doesn't remind you that your heart beats 900 times a day, that there are enough gallons of blood to make you into an ocean. And how beautiful is this sentiment? And it's only one small section of the poem. So I highly recommend that you click the link I leave down below and check out him reading it himself uh, because I, I don't really have words for how that poem makes me feel, but it definitely <laughs> makes me want to shake the dust. The next quote I have for you here is from one of my favorite books of all time that I discovered last year, which is How Do You Live by Genzaburo Yoshino. I have an entire review of me screaming about this book, and I truly, honestly believe that everyone should read this book. I think everyone can get something out of it. So please go ahead and check the review if these quotes, you know, spark your interest. If you think that this might be something you'd want to pick up. But this is a translated work, it's a Japanese classic, and it is the inspiration for the newest Ghibli film that's supposed to come out, I think, next year in 2023. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but the next one that is in the pipeline to come out of Ghibli Studios is going to be, you know, inspired by this book. This book is stunning, it has so much to say, and I've also talked about the translation by Bruno Nabosky. He did a fantastic job, and the writing is so immersive and gorgeous in this translation. 
I'm gonna take off the dust jacket um, because it's also beautiful that way and it's just easier for me to, to move around. So I have two quotes for you from this book. Before I actually read those quotes, let me tell you the structure of this book. So we follow our main character, Copper, who is a young boy coming of age. Uh, and he has a realization one day as he's looking over the streets of Tokyo with his uncle about just how many people are in the world. And it overwhelms him, this realization. And from that moment on, he starts to look at the world a little differently. And so the structure of this book is Copper's everyday life and his perspective uh, juxtaposed with letters that are written to him from his uncle. So this first quote is from a letter portion of this book um, from his uncle to Copper. And it says, For truly, just as you felt, individual people, one by one, are all single molecules in this wide world. We gather together to create the world, and what's more, we are moved by the waves of the world, and therefore brought to life. I mean, <laughs> can it get more poetic than that? This book really deals with the interconnectivity of people and how everyone's lives are connected, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and that passage really encompasses a lot of what this book has to say about that. That not only do the individuals make up the whole, but the whole is what makes us who we are. So we can't only define ourselves as an individual molecule, an individual thing. We have to see ourselves as part of a, a bigger picture. And this next set of quotes is from a section of the book that is from Copper's perspective. And he is digging up a plant that sprouted between a bunch of uh, rocks and uh, the plants were supposed to grow on the other side <laughs> of the garden But this particular plant decided to pop up in the middle of nowhere So he's in the process of digging it out to put it where it's supposed to be uh, And it says and how many days must it have taken to grow this far? It must have been at least 10 or 15 when he thought about it He realized this plant must have known spring was coming soon even way back when the ground was covered with snow and slowly, deep under the earth, it had started to get ready to send up a sprout. And then in the darkness of the soil, little by little, it had stretched itself upward without a rest, until just recently, at last, it lifted its face above the surface of the ground. Thinking of the little plant silently working alone in the dark, with nobody watching it until now, Copper felt something stirring in him. Already, this strangely shaped plant had become a figure of some consequence to him. Then continuing the quote, uh, there's a, a section in the middle that I'm, I don't want to make this quote too long, so I'll skip over that. And then on the next page, it continues by saying, Copper thought about it one more time. The power filling this single bit of green, that need to grow, made this small, humble plant lift up its head proudly. But when you lifted your eyes to look around, that need to grow was right now, at this very moment, starting to move. It was the maple in the paper plant, in the Enkentheus, really in every plant in the yard. Copper forgot to wash the dirt from his hands and stood in the warm sunlight, his chest swelled with a good feeling. The same need all those plants felt was stirring inside him as well. Such a beautiful description of the need to grow and to live and to be and to explore. Uh, that Imagery does come up later on in the book as well, so it's not an isolated quote there, but it's just, it's stunning the way that tiny, minute things are extrapolated into these big, beautiful thoughts on life. And that is very, very Japanese in nature. A lot of Japanese uh, stories and TV shows and, and ways of living talk about the little things and then extrapolating those. And this book does this in such a gorgeous way. The next quote is actually from a poem, a Victorian poem by William Wordsworth called We Are Seven. I did mention this in my personal canon tag, which I will have linked down below. And this poem on the surface looks very innocuous. It's a schoolmaster who is a figure from Victorian times that um, is kind of an, a representation of the establishment and Christianity. 
and kind of the overpowering influence that have on, had on society. And this schoolmaster is talking to a little girl about her family, and he asks her how many family or how many siblings do you have? And she says, I have seven. And he's like, No, because you know, two of your siblings are dead, so you you there's only five of you. And up until the very end of this poem, the girl never changes her story in saying, No, we're seven. And it's such a beautiful representation of a little girl standing up to the powers that be, telling her that her lived experience is not true based on their doctrine, not her lived experience. And I also have personal experience with a death of um, a child, or more, more than one, so this poem just really hit me in the feels. Uh, so I'll just read the last passage of this, but the entire poem is very beautiful, and I highly recommend you check it out. So in this last quote, we start with the um, schoolmaster saying, But they are dead, those two are dead, their spirits are in heaven. T'was throwing words away, for still the little maid would have her will, and said nay. We are seven. I've got three more quotes for you. The next one is from Oathbringer by Brando Sando. So this is a gigantic book. <laughs> I tabbed the living shit out of it. There are a lot of quotes that I really enjoy that Brandon Sanderson has written, but this one particularly, when I read it, I never forgot it, and I still remember the way it's worded to this day. So basically this book focuses on Dalinar and his, his character arc. And he did a lot of crappy things in the past, and this book really focuses on him trying to figure out how to grapple with that, how to move on from that, how to make the world better in spite of that, and, uh, you know, heal his, his relationship with people he's hurt. And there's this one quote, uh, like I said, that just stuck with me, and it says here, I am, Dalinar said softly, but sometimes a hypocrite is nothing more than a person who is in the process of changing. And this, I read this at a time when I started diving deeply into more online discourse, <laughs> where people will pull up stuff from years and years ago and, and really attack someone for it. And when a lot of nuance started to get lost, let's just put it that way, um, in online discourse. And I read this quote and it really, made me check myself in the way that I was judging other people. Uh, everyone has changed in their life. Everyone has done something that they regret. And some people are just very unlucky to have that thing be immortalized online. And that doesn't mean that they are stuck in stone and aren't able to change from that. And maybe we shouldn't be so quick to throw around the word hypocrite. Uh, I don't know. This, this quote really just stuck with me. Uh, and it reminds me that, you know, changing your opinion is okay. You get new information, you can change based on that. So, I just, I love that quote. So the next quote is also from a Victorian poem by William Ernst Henley. Now, <laughs> I took a lot of Victorian literature classes in university. I actually talk about that as well in my personal canon tag. Again, go check that out. But that's why there's a couple quotes <laughs> from that era, from poems from that era, but this poem is called Invictus, and I actually have a tattoo of this, a matching tattoo, uh, or a pair tattoo, not matching, but a pair tattoo with my best friend. Uh, and this poem is about facing adversity and not giving in to grief or despair and continuing on despite the things that might oppose you. And uh, I'll read the last quote here, which um, our tattoo is actually from, which says, It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And I actually have gotten quite a few questions and requests, uh, especially for my 1,000 subscribers Q&A I plan on doing, about tattoos and if any of my tattoos are bookish. So I have, uh, I am the master of my fate, and then my friend, my best friend has, I am the captain of my soul. So that is a bookish tattoo that I do have. Uh, I do plan to do a tattoo <laughs> tour 
one day. Um, I did promise this back when I had a 200 subscriber Q&A and I haven't done it yet. But a lot of that is because I haven't gotten my sleeve finished because my artist is in the States and I haven't been able to travel to the States for the last three and a half years. So I haven't been able to finish this and I would like to finish my sleeve or at least have it mostly finished before I do that video. I think so. But you may see this tattoo in a tattoo tour or in the Q&A if I decide to show it then uh, in the future. This last one is actually from a song from one of my favorite artists of all time, Dessa. So I have talked about her, I think, briefly once or twice on my channel. I also recommend her music to people <laughs> whenever I see the opportunity to because I think she is criminally underrated. She is fantastic. She's a rapper and a singer and she's highly intelligent. Her lyrics always give you something new to find every time you listen to them. And for this video I'm going to talk about her song Fire Drills, which is probably the best feminist anthem I've ever heard in my life. And it's so... somehow she takes the feeling that I've had ever since my body became a woman's body in the view of the world when I was like 13, 14. She takes that feeling that I think all of us that have grown up with that experience have shared and puts it into words in a way I've never read in anywhere else. In a way that just, yes, yes, that's how I feel. <laughs> like, there's no other way to say it. It's a stunning song. I'll have the lyrics video linked down below because sometimes she raps a little fast. It can be hard to hear what she's saying, so the lyrics video might be helpful um, in that regard. But uh, I'm gonna do one portion of the song for this video. It's gonna be a little long, so bear with me. <laughs> but it says, we don't say go out and be brave. No, we say be careful, stay safe. In any given instance, that don't hurt, but it sinks in like stilettos and soft dirt, like the big win is not a day without an incident. I beg to differ with it. I think a woman's worth, I think that she deserves a better line of work than motherfucking vigilance. Don't give me vigilance. By definition, you can't make a difference. If the big ambition is simply standing sentry to your innocence, that's not a way to live. That can't be what a woman is. That gives her nothing to aspire to. What that is, what that is, is just a life of running fire drills. It's everything. <laughs> it's everything I've felt since I was 13, 14, put into words. It's so stunning. Um, and the entire song is of that caliber, so please go check that out. That concludes the first collection of my favorite quotes um, that I've shared on my channel. I had so much fun filming this video and I really enjoyed searching and diving into previous media that have meant a lot to me to find these. So if you guys are interested in, you know, follow-ups of this video, I would love to make them. So please let me know in the comments down below if that's something that interests you. Um, I could focus more on books if people want that, but I think it's kind of fun to talk about other media because uh, we don't do that so much on booktube. So yeah, give me your feedback. Let's chat down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell. I'd love to have you as part of this community, and I appreciate it. But for now, I'm gonna head out. Jenny.